It's really gratifying. I, I was very conflicted about whether it made sense to take time to write a book when I had a lot of clients and a lot of people in need. And as I started writing, I felt really engaged by the process. It was very cathartic. Um, and I didn't know that it would mean anything to anybody else. And so it's been incredibly energizing and affirming uh, to have the book come out, to have people respond, and to certainly get the kind of recognition that the Carnegie Award provides is just absolutely uh, overwhelming. Um, but I'm also really excited because I'm hoping that people will learn more about some of these challenges that we're facing in our country, about the plight of people who've been thrown away and discarded and condemned. And I'm also hoping that they'll dig a little deeper into understanding what fear and anger has done uh, to our criminal justice system. Uh, and that really excites me because it's been so clear to me uh, that we have a system of justice that treats you better if you're rich and guilty than if you're poor and innocent for so long. And not being able to talk about it and not being able to engage people with it has been really frustrating. Uh, this is um, the opposite of frustrating in many ways. It's exciting and it's hopeful and it's affirming. And that really is uh, something I never expected uh, coming out of this book project, but I'm really, really excited about it. You know, I think in many parts of our country, everything seems closed. You've got a lot of people living in the margins of society. I work with kids who are born into violent families. They go to violent schools. They're chased by violent gangs. Their life is shaped by really despairing, desperate, uh, intimidating forces. Libraries are portals to another world. They're spaces where you can go through a door and everything is possible. And that opportunity to walk through a portal, particularly when you're living in the margins of society, particularly when people don't have high expectations for you, particularly when you're being menaced and threatened by so many things, is absolutely life-saving. Uh, when I was a little boy, the public library was segregated. We couldn't go through the front door. My mother absolutely refused uh, us to go to the library until it was integrated. And when integration came, uh, probably the first institution uh, we proudly went to as a family was the library. And that experience I've never forgotten uh, because I think it is a special place where ideas can be mixed. I, you know, I teach my students, I, I, I tell them that if you want to create justice, if you really want to change the world, uh, you can't just be smart. Uh, you need to be smart. You need good ideas in your mind. You need to be tactical and strategic. But you're not going to change the world with just the ideas in your mind. If you're going to change the world, you have to let the ideas in your mind be fueled by some conviction in your heart. And what I like about libraries, they're places where you learn, where you put things in your head. But if they're good libraries, staffed with good librarians, they're also places where you put things in your heart. And it's that stuff that you put in your heart that really changes the world and your relationship to the world. That's what the library did for me. Uh, that's what reading has done for me, and that's what excites me about um, this next generation of kids who are now walking through libraries for the first time, uh, that their heads and their hearts can be made different, ennobled, excited uh, by the great world of literature, and that's the great joy of this field and this arena.